And this is why I say that Hedera will be the trust layer of the future financial system. I don't believe that a lot of people are actually paying attention to this. Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So um, going back to around May of 2021, so a little over one year ago, we discussed, you know, Hedera becoming the trust layer of the, you know, future financial system, more so centering around CBDCs and the digital dollar within the United States. Now, currently, we have a few things that we are going to discuss first, and then we are going to get into the real juicy content um, at the end of this video. Now, by the time that this video does go live, we will most likely have, you know, a little bit more price action to really kind of see where we are headed. Um, I just want to warn you guys right now that we are at some nice little resistance zones. Um, and if we can break over them, then hey, this market is going to go on a tear to 25 to 28K on Bitcoin. And Ethereum will easily break over $2,000 and we will see a lot more altcoin movement. As recently, we have been watching a lot of altcoins kind of start to, you know, make some major breakouts. Um, there's a few that we have been watching around the DeFi sector. And, uh, you know, HBAR definitely is one that I have been watching a little bit. Um, but, you know, the gains are not like crazy compared to most. Like we are still in the single digits which is okay you know compared to most of the other assets that we have been playing around with uh, they are basically sitting within the same region so again not much has changed within that area um, but I love to see you know more price action when I do wake up but in regards to this overall market uh, we have been watching a lot of you know DeFi you know coins taken off and it's funny right because we just seen the biggest DeFi uh, you know announcement on Hedera with saucer swap labs going fully live and you know since then we have seen major developments happening on a day-to-day -day basis from them uh, just today alone the liquidity pool party never stops hot DeFi summer uh, wrapped to Bitcoin and HBAR yield farm is now live on saucer swap labs port your wrapped bitcoin from ethereum to hedera here at, and of course they do have the link and uh yeah this is awesome and you know you could definitely get into these because there's a lot around this um in fact like the apy on a lot of like the the, the actual farms on here um is like well over 200 percent and it's insane and i know that that might seem like for an example here is um head starter with uh hbar as well as usdc you can see like it's 242% and 280% APR. And you might be saying like, there's no way that that is sustainable. Well, it isn't sustainable as more and more individuals do stake their tokens. That APR or APY, if you will, as well, uh, is going to drop massively. So, you know, the early ones that are getting in here are the ones that are definitely, you know, making sure that they are providing, you know, not only their assets at a risk, but they are definitely, you know, celebrating the percentage that they are earning on here because 200%, almost 300% is a very significant percentage. Also, Zeus just announced today 32 million HBAR has been transacted via Zeus. The funny thing is, is that this happened on the 10th at 2.43 p.m., not even 24 hours later. We are sitting already at 33 million and the 24 hour volume has been about 470,000. Also real quick, I'm going to give a quick shout out to a collection. Uh, so I have been in, in, you know, talks with the owner and some of the creators around meta zombies. This project, I personally mint it over a hundred meta zombies fully transparent with you guys. The reason why is because I, th I see this, you know, floor here at 550 H bar rising drastically this has so much utility behind it and this project is something special and no this is not sponsored partnered or anything like that i'm not being incentivized um, i just think that this is probably one of the most overlooked nft projects on uh zeus market remember a lot of sales have been ramping up lately we have been seeing you know five thousand to ten thousand to a hundred thousand h bar sales on zeus I'm telling you guys, definitely go check out um, Meta Zombies, similar to other ones that we have talked about, like uh, Creamies and things like that. A lot of those have done like 10 to 20 to even 100 X's off of their floor prices. So definitely check it out if you guys are an HBAR holder. Now, with that in mind, let's move on and let's talk about a few things and let's talk about the juicy content that you guys are here for. So uh, there was this tweet on here uh, where somebody said, you know, rumor HBAR, you know, digital dollar. And uh, again, like this has been um, something that we have been discussing quite a bit. 
And uh, we do see this is from hill.house.gov. You know, rumor Hedera HBAR working on the digital dollar with the central bank. And we do see down okay. here, uh, uh, sorry, I did not mean for that to play. Um, Hedera currently is the tech reshaping the finance systems in Haiti in partnership with Haiti Pay. The country will have a new payment uh, regime and the first CBDC coming soon. Hedera also working with ANZ uh, Bank in um, Australia on their stablecoin. And I know that a lot of people say that, like I'm, I'm saying like this uh, wrong. I know it's like ANZ or ANZ or so. It's hard to really kind of keep up with it. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, but uh, listen closely to this. You know, the yeah. stable coins actually represent the rails on, onto which you can build use cases. And then that conversation around um, sustainability, yeah. around um, ESG, which wasn't mentioned, but in my mind, sustainability and ESG are two sides of the same coin. Yeah. And as you know, I'm, it's something I'm particularly passionate about. But um, ANZ has a, a strong sustainability focus as well. Yeah. On, on and, and that's what it was. It was NZ. So I do apologize for you guys. On behalf of your your customers, yes. are you blending that into your projects? Is there anything you want to talk about on that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we <laughs> yeah we have a very well articulated sustainability strategy, and um, you know we want to be a leader in that space. And we've made some announcements recently around pollination and those sorts of investments that we've made. So we're very serious about that. But the the, the, the network of choice at the moment is uh, is is both expensive uh, and arguably. I mean, we can debate. This, so I understand we don't want to go enter into the debate, but rather, you know, the, the allegation or even the, the perception of, um, you know, wastage or unsustainable practices around a what is, con what is conceived as a contemporary new form of uh, digital asset transactions is not really consistent. We've become very interested in the Hedera network, uh, and we have a, for a variety of reasons, we've deployed a, a coin on, on Testnet. Um, and the reason is that uh, when, you, when we make comparisons, uh, across a range of the available networks. And, we, you know, we're pretty chain agnostic, but when, it, when we're trying to fall in line with our principles around sustainability, um, the Hedera network is very, very defensible in terms of the consumption of energy for, to arrive at consensus. And, of course, the cost is extraordinarily much <laughs> lower uh, by a factor of about 1,000 in, in, in a recent transaction we did, um, just to prove a point, right? Um, so it's very favourable from a... Uh, a set of use cases that require high throughput and scalability. Uh, and we believe that in the future, stable coins will be so commonplace that that will be a fundamental requirement. Um, there's plenty more where that, where that came from, I think, to be announced soon. And I love the fact that he says that it's going to be fundamentally crucial uh, for these platforms to not only, you know, be able to provide the scalability factors that, you know, these banks are going to require but also, you know, the cost, the, you know, these are going to be high throughput use cases that are going to transact trillions of dollars, you know, possibly daily. We look at the daily, you know, flows with, you know, even for example, Swift doing $5 trillion a day. Like that is very substantial. And uh, also, yes, talking more so about this, we did see this PDF, and I'm sure that a lot of you have already seen this already, um, but it's Decoding CBDC, a Practical Guide to a CBDC Design and, um, Implementation. So down here, we do see Report Series, Partners, Ripple, Hedera, and Prosper Us, um, and they do break down a few things within this, as you guys do see. It's more so kind of researching just CBDCs in general. Uh, we do see, you know, Ripple being, uh, you know, spotlighted here with a lot of their, you know, CBDC use cases already. You know, with Ripple's CBDC, private ledger central banks can manage the CBDC lifecycle offering these benefits, stability, security, resilience, easy access and financial inclusion, interoperability with disparate, you know, payment systems and overlay uh, services, low energy consumption to promote sustainability. But then Hedera gets spotlighted as well. And we do see building the future of CBDCs, the Hedera Network Enterprise Advantage, performance, rapid development, high availability, ecosystem compatibility, eco-friendly, platform trust, predictable low TCO. Now, the funny thing here is, you know, I'm not trying to compare and contrast, uh, you know, Ripple and HBAR. Um, to me, I just don't believe that there is a major opportunity in saying, all right, well, which one is better? Is Hedera better than Ripple or is Ripple better than Hedera? No. Um, in fact, I think that anybody trying to argue that case is um, ill-informed around this market. They, they, they're they lacking the education and uh, information that they really need to understand that, guess what? It's not just going to be about Hedera. It's not just going to be about Ripple. But having these two spotlighted here in regards to CBDCs, 
is greatly appreciated and it should be something that we you know should look into because i think that this is great that they are both being spotlighted here and uh, down here we do see you know there is a gap in the conversation between central bank decisions makers and tech solution providers while providers focus on what is possible under optimal uh, conditions central banks or bankers worry about risk and adverse consequences uh, there's also a disparity in the level of the conversation decision makers think about requirements at a business policy and regulatory level whereas providers describe their functionality at a technical level the result is that it could be difficult to have the right conversations to match solutions with the needs and uh you know again like they really kind of look at the provider landscape down here transaction networks infrastructures and end solution providers technology partners research partners and uh, down here, we do see the CBDC technology solutions and infrastructure uh, providers. The funny thing here is that, uh, you know, you do see, and let me actually zoom out just one so that we can actually see things here. Uh, so the funny thing here is that we see over here, infrastructures, access network that can be used for, you know, the core CBDC ledger can be DLT or non-DLT uh, based. We do see, um, you know, many names, Hedera, Ripple, Stellar, et cetera. Um, but also over here, solutions provider. Now, I was surprised to see MTech here. I mean, like, we don't really hear a lot of noise from MTech. So technically, when we, whenever I see MTech, I instantly think Hedera because they're already fully partnered up together anyways. Uh, we could definitely, you know, dive into that and talk more so about it. Um, but you'd love to see Hedera on here as well. And uh, there's a few current market offerings around, you know, DLT. You know, comparing DLT-based infrastructures in a CBDC context, uh, they break this fully down in regards to Algorand, you know, Hedera Hashgraph, Hyperledger Fabric, Corda, Ripple, Stellar. Uh, you do see the types of infrastructure. You see the access, scalability, which, by the way, out of all of these use cases, you know, the funny thing about Hedera is that they don't even mention uh, the sharding capabilities of Hedera in regards to, like, it actually getting to um, the unlimited transactions per second uh, point. I love the fact that they do mention that it is private permission or even public, which is the big three. A lot of these are only, you know, on the two base ones. For example, Algorand, private permission. Um, Hyperledger Fabric, private permission. Corda, private permission. Ripple, private permission. Stellar, you know, public. Aldera is hitting every single, you know, nail on the head there. Uh, we also do see type of infrastructure, application network on public ledger. You know, a lot of these are layer two, layer one, etc. Technically, you could say that HBAR is a layer one, sure, um, but, you know, again, it's it's just a different type of in, in infrastructure in general. We do see unique selling pro uh, proposition, speed to settlement, finality, energy, efficiency, and governance. Um, and you do still see, like, Ripple, you know, hitting some nice, you know, targets here, um, which it's funny that they're saying that, you know, Ripple is carbon neutral. You could technically say that Hedera is carbon negative here. Um, I don't think that they did a little bit more uh, research than, you know, what they're letting on here in, in regards to information. Um, we do see enterprise grade with uh, production experience. Again, like that's technically, I mean, like, I'm not trying to compare Ripple to Hedera here at all. I'm just saying like a lot of like the information here in regards to like the unique selling proposition is just kind of, you know, disregarding what the big opportunity here is around like Ripple, for example, with XRP, uh, which is like on demand liquidity. I think that that's like the biggest area to really focus on. But uh, yeah, I mean, you definitely see like the notable uh, partnerships and stuff like that. And you do see like comparing full stack CBDCs. Um, I just don't think that there's going to be a one size fits all here. And I, I really don't believe that at the end of the day, there's going to be a one, you know, winner, uh, you know, when we look at a lot of like the the community around Ripple or even like Hedera, a lot of people think that's just like one of these are going to go after all of the money and that's it. They're not going to be successful in that area because all of these major central banks are going to have their own DLT that they're going to utilize and even infrastructure as well. And uh, we do see here that they do compare consensus bit, MTech, G plus D, and as well as Prosperous and Ripple. Um, I do like the fact that like MTech is still on the same level as... Uh, you know, Bit and G, G plus D, which is can integrate with centralized and DLT based infrastructure. So it's again, like MTech and Hedera working together is uh, huge. And we do see the MTech CBDC infrastructure Hedera consensus service. This is why we look at this. And I love the fact that they are saying that it is ISO 222 interoperability uh, or compliant, if you will, which is a, a big yes. And uh, you love to see that. But uh, 
Yeah, there's quite a bit more into this. I think that Hedera is like a, a main choice, and I think that it definitely you know provides quite a bit of value as well within that area. Um, there's quite more down here in regards to like CBDC solutions and stuff like that. Um, but MTech is one that I have been paying attention to quite a bit, and I told you guys to pay attention to them as well. Um, when we go look at their you know website, you see a few of the things that they are you know doing. First off, the M Squad is a part of you know North America. Caribbean, uh, Europe, Europe, sorry, Asia and Africa. So they are expanding globally right now. Um, they are continuously growing as well. Uh, the team behind it is substantial. We've talked about the team. Also, many clients. The funny thing here is that, again, I don't think that people are paying attention to this, and I think that they should be, uh, because not only are they a partner, or I should say, not only are their clients and engagements um, around like Central Bank of the Bahamas, Bank of Ghana, also the Central Bank of Nigeria, but also over here, United States Federal Reserve System. Yes, this is why I say that Hedera is a huge, you know, it's a huge giant that a lot of people just don't like because of the price action. But I think that people should be paying attention to it because, yes, it has substantial connections here. First off, you know, going here into the team, like, look at the risk e e expert here. You know, serving at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, and most recently at the U.S. Treasury in the Office of Technical Assistan Assistance. Again, the the back the background resumes around some of the people working within MTech is substantial. But also not only that, but when we go over here to Project New Dawn, this is the one from May of 2021 that we discussed Hedera being the trust layer. Why? Well, let's go down here. So here we have um, now, yes, since this article or since this PDF came out, a lot more has really kind of unfolded within the Hedera ecosystem to really kind of confirm that, hey, Hedera is here to not only disrupt CBDCs, or I should say uh, disrupt the financial system, but also to issue CBDCs on its ledger. Um, but down here, we do see further working with the Hedera Hashgraph network. We will develop further understanding on how to use uh, interoperability to provide trust in the private CBDC network. Then down here as well, uh, we did see them break down their you know technical collaborators. And uh, they break down this fully. And we do see Hedera is the only distributed ledger network built to run mission critical enterprise workloads. Like this is confirmation of, uh, you know, how just ahead Hedera is compared to most. And of course, yes, this is, you know, created from MTech, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it is in collaboration with many other players, which we've discussed in the past. Um, but I think that when we look at Hedera on paper, you know, everyone just kind of looks at it as like the one token that underperformed in the last bull run. And it's, you know, for good measure, I understand it. Um, but you got to understand where Hedera is positioned and where they are really kind of, you know, playing in regards to like the actual playing field. Because to me, we are go going to head into a CBDC architecture around um, not only like the Federal Reserve System, but global payment system. Uh, yes, I do think that the connections run deep within Hedera to not only like the Federal Reserve. Would I, you know, 100%, you know, say it's con it's confirmed that Hedera is going to power the digital dollar? Not necessarily. I don't want to speculate too much on that, but I would say that there's a high chance that it could. Um, so with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to, you know, follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.